Hey, Dr. C with you. I uh, want another quick update about iodine testing. I got so many questions on this. I want to help you guys sort this out and make sense of it. This was from someone who had a blood test done for iodine. And her doctor's been pushing her to take more of it because of that. And the funny thing is, she lowered her iodine intake several months ago and has now seen a big improvement in her thyroid scores. And she's not sure why her blood levels say that she's low. So let's make sense out of this. I'm going to pull up an image here for you guys real quick. This is a pretty common report for serum iodine on the top portion of this image. And I made this anonymous. Her serum iodine levels were 42. And this report gives a range of 52 to 109. I totally can see how someone could look at that you know, person or doctor and think, oh, she's low in iodine. Uh, just uh, for... Uh, comprehensiveness. It also shows her thyroglobulin antibodies are at three, which is flagged as being elevated. Um, that's They're positive. They're not crazy high, but they're up. So 42 flagged as below range for serum iodine. So let's talk about this briefly. So iodine is in the thyroid, it's in the serum, and it's in the urine. We find it in a few other areas, but those are the main compartments in which it'll be found in the body. And they mean different things in different areas. So the thyroid has a concentrator. It pulls iodine inside of itself. And so the levels inside of it are different than they are elsewhere. Now, the urine is where most iodine ends up when we are getting rid of it. We want to eliminate it. So that's where it goes. The serum is where it is as it's being moved throughout the body. Uh, the serum levels are kept pretty steady unless there's so much iodine that our kidneys can no longer clear it. So the serum levels, regardless of if we have too little, too much, are pretty much gonna bounce around in a similar range until we get so much that our kidneys are being harmed and our kidneys are now converting iodide into iodine. And at that point, serum levels go up rapidly. When is this useful? Well, almost never. <laughs> there is a medication called amiodarone and there are some supplements that are just ridiculously high in iodine. And if someone's used something like that and they're seeing kidney damage, liver damage, sad, but these things happen, uh, pulmonary damage, and they're wondering if the iodine could be doing it, a serum test can answer that question. It's only really for iodine toxicology, but within the range of nutritional iodine, you know, way too little, a bit too little, about right, a little bit too much excess, Serum doesn't really pick up on that. It doesn't change that. And here's an image to show that and make more sense of it. So now below, here was the blood test that I talked about. I'm going to pull that off for a minute. I'm going to make this image bigger. So here is a group of scores that are compared. And these are people and their urinary iodine was measured compared to their serum iodine. Now, urinary iodine in large numbers of people does reflect overall nutritional status. It doesn't at the individual level, but it does in a population. And that's what this is looking at. So what we see here, urinary iodine in very high units is going up on the scale on the left side, on the vertical axis. We see zero, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Then we see serum iodine, micrograms per liter, over on the bottom axis. Now, the gal that that tested, she was at 46, so she's somewhere just below 50. And if you look up, her scores, as far as a large group of people like that, their urinary iodine could be a thousand. It could be somewhere below a thousand. It could be all the way down. And, and this scale is not very granular. So urinary iodine, we think about best levels. I'll pop that up. Being somewhere in the 50 to 200 microgram per gram or per liter range in the urine. So we think 50 to 200 is probably the sweet spot. But if we see this, what we're seeing is that a serum level of 46, it could be anywhere. It could be like easily in the 500 or even in the close to 1,000 range or all over in between. And that's for an individual. So that's why we say that serum levels just don't equate to nutritional status. They are readily available, and it makes perfect sense to want to test for these things, but the tests are just not accurate. The one situation in which it helps to test for iodine is for someone who's already lowered their iodine intake and they're just wondering if if it will help them get their thyroid. If they've already done that for a while and they've not seen the improvements they want and they're not sure if 
either they've already done well on lowering their iodine or it's just not going to help. And so in those cases, they can test it in a way that I'll mention. And if they are at the target, then they're already doing it and they should see the benefits emerge. If they're not at the target, they need more time or they need to look more closely for some hidden sources of iodine. And that's a different kind of test. That's one that's called a urinary to iodine creatinine ratio. So not, not the typical urinary iodine test. And that one, it's not even helpful to see whether or not someone can benefit by reducing their iodine. You know, Some of the studies that showed people improve thyroid function by reducing iodine, some of them did test people before they started. And you would think that those who were high in iodine got better, those who were low didn't make a difference, but it didn't work that way. And that's because the iodine in the thyroid is different. It's a whole separate compartment. So if you're in the modern world, you've got hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, subclinical disease, uh, Graves' disease. If there's something off with your thyroid, in somewhere between 60 or 80% of the cases, regulating iodine to keep it in a safe range can make a big difference. And by a big difference, I mean a really big difference. I mean like your thyroid working perfectly normal in the course of a few months. So that's the exciting message that's behind the thyroid reset diet. And I just wanted to give you guys clarity on serum iodine testing. All right, that's it. I'll see you again sometime really soon. In the meantime, take good care of yourselves and your thyroid. <laughs> Bye-bye.